sustain you. He will sustain you. Cast your cares on the Lord. He will sustain you. He will sustain you. He will never, 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 never let the righteous fall. Let the righteous fall. Let the righteous fall No Okay, so, with that being said, a little sidetrack we're going to take here for just a second. Sorry, my allergies are really bad, so if you have, if you, if you see in the video that, you know, there's just like a, a blurb in the, in the videos because I'm stopping recording, so I can have like, you know, an allergy issue. <clears throat> so anyway, how is fear of the Lord the beginning of wisdom? And I wanted to touch on this a little bit because I think... Nobody understands that how that's connected, okay? So, Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Basically, this verse teaches that the fear of God is fundamental to true wisdom. All other, all other types of learning are worthless unless built upon the knowledge of the Lord Himself, okay? Many other passages talk about the fear of the Lord. Psalms 10, 11, 11 10, Proverbs 1, 7, 14, 7, 15, 33. Before we can understand how the fear of the Lord leads to wisdom, we need to define what the Bible means by fear in this context, okay? In the Bible, the word translated fear can mean several things, okay? It can refer to the terror one feels in a frightening situation in Deuteronomy 2.25. It can mean respect in the way a, a servant fears his master and serves him faithfully, Joshua 24.14. Fear can, be also, uh, can also donate the reverse of awe or awe a person feels in the presence of greatness, Isaiah 6.5. The fear of the Lord is a combination of all of these. I was talking a little earlier about. Fear of the Lord can be defined as the continual awareness that our loving Heavenly Father is watching and evaluating everything we think, say, and do. Because He does. Okay? 
Matthew 12, 26, Psalms 139, 2, and Jeremiah 12, 3. As Jesus told each of the seven churches in Revelations 1 through 2, I know your works. Nothing escapes his attention. Okay, so when we go try to hide something from somebody, or we're doing something sneaky behind what we think behind other people's back, everything we do, he knows. Seriously. I mean, the people out there that think they're getting away with it, like when they say they think you're getting away with murder, they're not. The people that are, whoever out there is lying and cheating or stealing or ending somebody else's life and getting away with it off of a mistrial or you name it, God sees it. Okay? It's very important that we understand that nothing we do, and I've told you before in other videos, that we will be accountable for everything we've done on this earth in our time here when we die. Or before then, or I, whatever plan he has for each individual, because he does have a plan. We, we'll be accountable. But the saving grace to us is Christ. He's our defender. He, he, he's, he's walked the earth. He's lived with us. He, he knows. He understands. And he loves us just as much as our Father does. I mean, I, I don't even, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say he loves us more because I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure God loves us more because he sent him. But Christ died for us so that way we could be with our Father. Seriously, if we think about it, if you think about it, I'm sitting here thinking about it right now. If Christ didn't love us, he wouldn't have died for us. He didn't try to get out of it. All he had to do when the Pharisees were sitting there trying to say, do you believe you're the son of God? All Jesus had to say was no. They believed he was a prophet. Absolutely they believed he was a prophet. But when he started saying that he was the son of God, they couldn't wrap their heads around it. But it's okay because he had to die anyway. But he knew, like I said before, he was born to die. Unfortunately, he had to die for us. I mean, would you allow somebody else to die for you? Now? Right now? That's what he did for us. He died for us. He died for me. He died for you. That's not love. I don't know what is. Anyway. Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. This verse gives us some added insight with its antithetical parallelism. There is a sharp contrast between the wise life and the foolish life. Okay, A, wis a wise person fears, reverences, obeys the Lord. A fool despises God's instruction and cannot be told what to do which is rampant now, okay? The wise person is, a wi is wise because he has started at the starting place. The fool has no foundation on which to build wisdom. Okay, so, to continue, the link between the fear of God and wisdom means we cannot possess wisdom if we recreate God in our own image. Okay, too many people want to tame God into a non-threatening nobody. And that's true, it's so true. I mean, so true. Uh, but if we redefine the Lord as a God that makes us feel comfortable, a permissive buddy who exists simply to bless us and give us what we want, we will not fear him in the way he deserves to be feared. The Lord God Almighty is great, far greater than that. 
And the fear of the Lord begins when we see him in his majesty and power. Revelations 4.11, Job 42, 1 through 2. The Lord shows Job and us a glimpse of his power in Job 38 through 41 when he describes his absolute sovereignty over everything. And this is what Job 38 through 41 says. Okay, I'm going to read this to you right now. As soon as it pops up in. The Lord answered Job and uh, out, uh, answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsels my words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. When where, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurement? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were, were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstones? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut the in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made when I made clouds and garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, "There, thus for shall you come, and no further, and here here shall your pride waves be stayed." Have you commanded the morning since your days began? and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. For the wicked, their light is withheld, and their, up, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or watched in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of depth of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expense of the earth? Declare if you know all of this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light? And where is the place of darkness? That you may take it to its territory, and that you may discern the past to its home. You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow, or have you seen the storehouses of the hail, which I have reserved for the times of trouble, for the day of battle and war? What is the way to the place where the light is dis uh, disturbed, or where the east wind is scattered upon the earth? Oh wow, this is, I didn't realize, oh yeah, okay. Has the, rain of fa uh, has the rain of father, or who has begotten the drops of dew? For whose womb did the ice come from? And who has given birth to the frost of heaven? The waters come hard like stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Can you bid the chains of the Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth Mazaroth in their season, or can you guide the bear with its children? Do you know the ordinances of, heaven, of the heavens? Can you establish their rule on earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds that on the flood of water may cover you? Can you send forth lightning that they may go and say to you, here we are? <laughs> Can you control the lightning? Oh, I can't. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts or, or given understanding to the mind? Who can number the clouds by wisdom? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs and the mass and the clods stick fast together? Can you hunt the prey up for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in the weight of their thicket? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God for help and wonder about the lack of food? Not me. I, pff, nope. That's pretty harsh. It's a pretty, it's not harsh. It's, it's, God's telling us and him, where were you when I, did you do all this? If you did, then stand up and take credit. Tell me how you did all this stuff. 
So how in the world, just knowing that verse, I know it's kind of long, please go back and read it again, if you can, if you have time. I really, really wish you would. Job 38 through 41. I stopped at 39 because <laughs> it's, it's rather long. So how in the world do we think we have control over anything in our lives? Just with, with those path passages. We put fear in front of faith. We have to truly, just truly, truly, truly dig into ourselves and let go and wait for God in everything that we do, not when it's convenient for us. Seriously, everything that we do should be centered around waiting on God's answer and His reply because nothing that we should be doing should be for ourselves including fear fear is the, the enemy fear is bad fear is evil that's not God we have to remember that fear is not God and us taking our pills and taking prescription medicines to try to damp down all this stuff we've taken God out of the equation Because if we truly trusted in God, and we, we wouldn't have fear. Not that kind, not, not, not the bad kind of fear. So, moving on. 